Hey, what's up you guys? Shardness Prime here doing another Zoom interview from the dork room and today I am pleased to be speaking with the man, the Todd father himself, Mr. Todd McFarlane. How are you doing today, sir? God, how you been? How you been? I've been, I've been, been very flawless. good. Yeah, good. Thanks for having me again. Thank yeah, thanks for Thanks for taking the time to be here. I, I, it's always a great time talking to you. You have been very busy. It seems uh, there's I'm always busy. Yeah, there's. There, it seems like there's another action figure reveal happening uh, just about every other day, and it's and it's 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 quite stunning to see. I just wanted to jump into the questions right away. Sure. Um, one thing, speaking of the reveals, one thing that I've noticed with McFarlane toys compared to some other companies, um, the 1999 price point on the majority of your DC multiverse figures seems to maintain at 1999. I have not seen that happen with pretty much any other action figure line. Everything else has gone up in price. Yeah. Especially recently. I feel like there's been, two price hikes that have happened in the last year. I think one was about six or seven months ago, and it seems like we've gotten another one. And I'm curious how you are able to do that. Uh, so a couple of things. First off, um, I've got a heavy deadline. So if, I, if I'm if i talking and my head's down, it's because I got to finish drawing my cover here. So I'll, I can... <laughs> Because I'm I'm used I'm used to talking and drawing like this. Just we now have Zoom, right? Uh, right. So, so if you see the top of my head, it's not that I'm not paying attention. It's just I'm very good at drawing and talking and listening at the same time. This cover got to get colored tonight, so we can go to the printers tomorrow, right? So oh, I literally I literally have a, this gun until my colorist. Uh, uh, we're up against it. Um. So so here here. Look at the easy answer is simple. The overly simple answer is I'm not a public company, right? And and as such, you know, let, let, let's just sort of talk about public companies. They're required. We can argue whether it's good or bad, but they're required to bring the most value to their shareholders as possible. Um, and as part of that, they have to make decisions every 90 days because they have to do a shareholders report every 90 days publicly. And they their job is to always grow and maximize, grow and maximize, grow and maximize. And I think for you know a company like mine, who's been private since day one and not only in toys, but with all my other companies, um, I don't I don't feel that added pressure. I, I don't my goal is not to maximize profits, I'm not. I don't, I'm not required to do it. I I've always lived by the creed that if you put out a good product uh, and you put it at a good price and people like it, then they'll buy it. And if they buy it, then you make money, right? And so I, I it's it's interesting when I talk to people at public company, they talk about the money first and the product second. I actually go, let's build the product. Let's make a cool product put a fair price on it. And if we do our job right on both of those, then people will support us and then you make the money. Um, and and so there are pressures right now with almost every company, you know, looking at whether they should be raising prices. And when those pressures come, you know, there's really only two things that happen. You see it in the food, in the food industry. You either raise the price of the bag of chips or, which is what Frito-Lays just announced the other day, or uh, or Tostito, they're going to put less chips in the bag, right? Oh. I mean, that was a headline literally two days ago. And so do you want to pay, you know, you've been paying $1.50 for your bag of chips. Do you want to go up to $2 or would you rather pay $1.50 but get fewer chips, right? Um, and most companies will make a decision on, well, you know what, let's just give them last and hold the line because the price matters, right? I mean, to everybody, the price matters. The problem with toys and especially with action figures, you can't, you can't really give less potato chips because it becomes too noticeable, 
right? You just go, hey, we're, we're not going to paint the toy. Well, it's noticeable. We're not going to do 20 points of articulation. We're going to do four. That's noticeable. Um, and so if you want to keep the same standard that the collectors, you and I, the geeks are used to, you're sort of forced into a corner, which is you got to you got to raise the price if you want to keep the quality there. Now, I'm not saying, let's just be clear, that I might not be forced to get there. But what I do have the luxury of, and I've talked to all my management, is that we should be the last one in that pool. Let the big boys do it. Let the big boys sort of squeeze it. And there's only two things that are going to happen. Either they're going to raise the price ahead of us, which they have, and so it may, makes us look good because we've got a lower price. That's, that's good for business. Or they're going to cheapen the product uh, and keep the price, which is good for us because we're not going to do that, which is good for business, right? So let them make the moves first, and then we will just have to sort of uh, adjust uh, behind them. And hopefully you get a couple of brownie points because you were able to hold the line for six months, a year, a year and a half longer than everybody else because I don't have to maximize the profits, right? Um, so so yeah. let me ask you about that though, like with freight shipping, I know freight shipping costs have gone up. Oh, so, <laughs> so, so let's, so we used to pay 2000 for a container and then, and then the middle of the pandemic was silly. It was 20,000, it was 10 times the cost, right? So <laughs> last I checked, uh, it was seven. Yeah, now it's ten. Okay. Yeah. So so there there are pressures uh, of some things going up. Uh, containers being one of them. Um, if you hear the word supply chain, the biggest really component, from my experience at least in the business I'm in, the biggest component isn't that you can't find plastic, and you can't even and not that you can't even find containers. It's that you need human beings to load containers onto boats and get them off boats and move them into warehouses. That's the clog. It's not the product. There's plenty of product. We've had product, and you've read these stories, that have been sitting on the water for two months, two and a half months. The product's made. It's here. They just There's not enough people to unload it. Why? Because the docks have you know 10,000 workers, and they used to get 10,000 boats for 10,000 workers and but now they got 10,000 workers and now they got 40,000 boats because everybody's panicking every company's going oh my gosh we better get our product over here uh because there's a clog and by that doing that they're creating more of a clog right, right. so and right. the systems aren't built to accommodate that right gas does the exact same thing if everybody wants to fill up their tank today you're going to see gas stations will put up you know out of out of fuel today uh so all of this is happening, and then you compound it with you actually build all that, you got it over here, and you don't have enough people literally to offload the toys right. <laughs> and then and then drive them to the stores, right? So and that's, that's, that's where the, the cost changes come in, right? And the well, and well, and no, well, at the delay, the delay, the and, delay then, and then and then for big companies, the pressure becomes even greater. If your product has been delayed, it's not on a shelf. If it's not on a shelf, you're not making money. If you're not making money, you're not hitting your budgets. So now you have conversations. How do we make it up? Oh, we got to make more money next quarter. How do you do that? We got to we got to raise the price. You know, and and sometimes it's like it's it's a false it's a false narrative, right? Of and and another little factoid in there is that whether you have items on those pegs or not, you still have to pay those retailers for that peg space. Whether you have your product there or not, you're paying for that. No, no, right. Those are called penalties. I've done plenty of them. They, <laughs> they say, we're going to give you those pegs, Todd. You better have them here on March 1st. And if they're not there on March 1st, they charge me as, as if they were selling them. So they go, if you don't want to get them because that's your problem, Todd, we're going to still bill you like we were actually selling them because we can't have empty shelves. We're making money either way. So either they're making money because people are going in and buying the product, or they're basically sending me a bill saying, well, then you're going to give us the money instead. And I'm not unique in that. They just have rules and regulations and you get penalties right i mean we paid 
I think last year, $3.2 million in penalties because of delays of product, right? And so other people, I mean, if I paid that much and I'm a tiny company, think, think about what big companies might've paid with the, their delays, right? Yeah. So they're, they're going, oh my gosh. So now they're trying to figure out how to make the money back, da 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 da, da. So anyways. Well, so because your pricing hasn't gone up, and you've had to pay those fees, right? So, yeah. so you've just eaten those costs. Yeah, then, right? it, means, that, that right. cost... it means it means it means I make less money and our profits go way down. Yeah. So we're 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 from 2020 to 2021, we sold more product and made less, way less money, way less money. Wow. So okay. that's the pressure that's on big companies right now. They're selling. If you actually listen to some of their their um, um, you know public reports that they give you know their earnings reports mm -hmm. if you if you actually look at a couple of them you're going to see a, a little bit of consistency they sold more units made less money because uh, less profits let's call it that uh because it's costing it's costing them more to basically get the product from a to b whether it's delays and goods or whatever something's happening in there so but this is the advantage. I'm a public, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a private company. So I'm okay with that, right? I don't have anybody that's in my ear saying, Todd, oh my God, you should go up two bucks, you know, because you're losing money or you should make more. We can make more, we can make more. Like, I understand all that. I'm saying, because it's my company and I understand the business ramifications of all that. I've been at it for close to 30 years. I, like, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with, I'm okay with making less for at least a certain amount of time, right? I mean, not forever because again, you know, we used to be $6 toys and we're not anymore, um, right. but not, I don't, I don't, I don't have to jump when everybody else jumps. So, so your mentality is more of weathering the storm rather than, Hey, we're going to have the consumer be the life raft over here. Like you're, yeah. you're, you're counting. Well, I think, I think that, I think the consumer is the life raft. And I think that one of the ways to keep them from saving you is to not take advantage of them when at every waking moment, right? I mean, my comic books, I'm the only guy in the comic book market at $2.99. Could I go to $3.99 and $4.99 like Marvel and DC and everybody else? Of course I could. Why? Who would benefit out of that? Me? I'd make, I'd make more. I'm okay. I'm, I'm good. Don't worry about me. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. So I sit there. And it seems like silly that they're like, Todd, two ninety nine, three ninety nine. I don't know. A buck is a buck still. I think it still matters, right? All things being equal. All things being equal. Do you want the chocolate bar that's this big for two ninety nine? Do you want the chocolate bar this big for three ninety nine? All things being equal. Shit, you'll take the one for a buck cheaper. So to me, and sometimes you may even get it. Uh, a buy a pickup from somebody who's like ah, i really want that other one but you know there's one there that's two or three or four dollars cheaper okay and then they and then you may hook them um nothing wrong with that not, you know I, I when i go to convention i used to go to conventions and with some big celebrities you know the ones where celebrities charge thirty dollars for signatures and things right? oh yeah yeah, okay. yeah and they're all there and then i have this sometimes this massive line and you can see the celebrities. It's pretty funny sometimes. You're like there and you're on that same row. And all the celebrities are like, who is that dude with the big lie? Right? The answer is easy. I'm the dude giving it away for free. That's who I am. Who cares? It's free. What are you talking about? I'm getting lined for anything that's free. Right? Shit. Free movie. I'm not even going to ask whether it's a good movie. It's a free movie. I'm in. Right? Free food. I'm in. I'll go to my enemy's house for free food. Shoot. I'm in. So price matters, price matters. And I remember as a kid not having a lot of cash. So anyways, we're just trying to, we're trying to do right by the customers that have been basically supporting us here. So. That's awesome. That, no, I, I think that's great. I think that's a, it's a noble business model to, to abide by. One thing that a lot of people have been talking about recently is the banning of plastic guns coming with the action figures. Mm -hmm. Now you've, I have, uh, I got, I got Thomas Wayne right over here and he, he's got guns. And I mean, um, 
I feel like for the character, it's important. It's a key part of the character. I wanted to get a little insight from your perspective on um, are, are, are there no guns to be allowed at all anymore? I remember being disappointed that the Peacemaker figure that you made did not come with a gun. I was like, oh, that's a part of the character. You know, that's like when it's a part of the character and the story, I feel a little bit of frustration right there. And I'm kind of curious to to know your perspective on that. So, so we've done um, hundreds of licenses over the years. And the people who own the brands and the IPs, the intellectual properties, they're, they're the boss. And they basically dictate to us, not the other way around. Um, so if we say, hey, we want to make this character, and they say, no, nope, we, don't, we don't ever want that character made. You, you never get to make them. It's just that simple. Mm. So sometimes things come from higher up that are just given to us and we just have to abide. So, uh, and, and I don't, I long ago stopped worrying about whether I agreed with them uh, because when you're dealing with big, 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 big billion dollar companies and they make their decisions, they assume they're doing it for the betterment of those brands and their company and their strength and all those, all the above. So have they made a decision about guns and action figures? Uh-huh. Are we abiding by it? Uh-huh. Did they ask my opinion? Nope. <laughs> so what, 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 what I have, would I have done it otherwise? Of course. What are you talking about, right? Um, but, he's got three guns, right? He's got those. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you're. So now you're. You, you know, we, we we do we're doing the best we can, given that we have a new application that we have to put towards the toys, uh, and so uh, it could alter some of the figures and characters we make, because if it's if you're doing the Punisher and you can't put a gun, I mean, I, mean, I, I guess he's still cool in his costume. So, uh, um, which is why we're coming up with alternate ways of putting other props that work or don't work. Um, is there a workaround? I think so. Uh, so, will we be coming up with some generic weapons packs? Yeah. Ooh. Will they coincidentally fit into some of our toys? I don't know. You guys as the customers will have to see, right? Like what do you talk like so so then I just gotta sell stuff separately. And uh and then and then we'll that that I mean we'll 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 go there. So um sounds, sounds so awesome. look 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 uh look in the future here, you know, on, on spawn.com or McFarland Toy Store or something like we'll just we'll just put out a weapons pack and let people decide whether they they want some. Awesome. I think oh that's that's incredible. I haven't heard any discussion of that before. So that's kind of that, that's awesome to hear. And, and assuming that the overall answer to that question is similar to the answer to this other question of why so many Batmans, right? There's like so many Batman figures. Mm -hmm. So and I, I and I'm assuming I, I, I think it's twofold, really. I mean, one is the easy one. It's Batman. Who I, like who's the biggest character of DC? It's Batman, it's not Superman. It's not Flash, not Wonder Woman. It's Batman. It's Batman. It's Batman. Also, you can sell a generic Batman figure, I think, 365 days out of the year, right? There's going to always be another new fan walking down the aisle that goes, oh, my God, I need the classic Batman. Just because I put Batman out in January does not mean somebody doesn't want to buy it in March. Um, so they're going to uh, be there. So Batman has his sort of already his sort of classic, you know, and his brand and whatever else. Now, as you start getting to some of the iterations of it, the derivatives, then I don't think the average person knows who they are, right? Um, because unless you're a comic geek like you and I. So now a lot of them are just that some of them are just really cool looking, right? And they happen to also be Batmans because when we're looking at the array of characters that are in DC, a lot of their characters are also Batmans, right? So they don't have they don't have a hundred 
you know, different Wonder Womans, you know, but, you know, they they have a bunch of Batmans. You've got a bunch of, what do you mean, Marvel's got a bunch of Spider-Mans now, right? I've had for years a bunch of spawns. Uh, and so, and if they look cool, then go ahead and and make them, right? Uh, and so, so, so that's it. I mean, we're still mixing and matching with some of the villains and and, and the other characters and whatever else, but it just, we keep getting these designs and we're going, oh my God, that one looks cool. And it happens to be a derivative of a Batman, right? I, I'm not even looking, and honestly, I'm not even looking at half of them as Batman. I'm just going, that one's cool, right? Don't put, don't tell me any names, just that one's cool, that one's cool, that one's cool. And then they say, yeah, that one's called whatever, you know, Meatloaf Batman. And it's like, hmm, okay, cool. But if it was called, iceberg lettuce man i still would make it because it looks kind of cool um so no there's no there's no agenda with the the batmans it just happens to be a lot of the characters that are popular and or you know i think cool looking i i mean i i find uh batman to be my favorite uh dc characters so yeah i could see how <laughs> i'm one of them that falls for for picking up multiple Batmans. So I, I, I could see where you're coming from with that. And the movie just came out. You have a Batman movie, yeah. and uh, which I thought was awesome. I really liked the movie a lot. And um, and, and, you, and you made some really cool Batman figures as well. Um, I, I talked about, I think, all the movie Batman figures that are out already, um, which kind of leads me into my next question is that, a lot of the figures from the the Batman movie, um, a lot of a lot of us have paid attention to how a lot of the figures are just kind of looking off to the side. Side eye, yeah. Side eye, yeah. As a consumer, I'm not a big fan of the side eye, mm -hmm. and I've I, and I've heard people complain about the side eye as well, yep. and I've heard other people say that it doesn't bother them one way or another, but I've never heard anybody really get excited for having the side eye. So it, because it feels like it limits your ability to pose the figure around and everything. So are we going to see more of that in the future, or is it? I think, no, we'll we'll be dialing it back. We'll be dialing it back. The the you know. So let's just go to the to the initial reason for is it sometimes to me when you get it like looking straight on just just me, mm -hmm. you get this sort of dead mannequin look, right? Right. Sometimes. And to me, it's like. It's it's you know I'm I'm an artist I'm like it's just not very real. We did we used to do the side eye stuff a lot and applied it I thought effectively in things like uh, sports, right? So somebody's dribbling the basketball to the left but they're looking to the right. Why? Because it would give the illusion that they're either they're looking at their defender or they're looking to a teammate to pass it. So it to me the body was moving. They were moving and it felt like you you were taking one guy that was in the middle of something. I just wish I had the other players because something was going on. Um, and so I decided to experiment with it. Uh, some some of the uh, painting and the in the prototypes got way too side eye, right? I'm, so I'm mm. like, guys, like when I'm saying off center, I don't mean they have to be. Like, I mean, I'm just saying a little bit off center, so it's not a dead stare. Uh, so so we'll be dialing it back, probably doing some that are the dead stare that people are used to, and then some that are off a little bit and and pulling back from the extreme side eye, if, if you want to call it that. So gotcha. um, so I've, I've, heard, I've heard the comments, you know, usually I, I was like, hey, I have my deep reasons. I don't really have a deep reason that I need to adhere to. And so people are saying, hey, it's a, it's a little bit much, Todd, then I'll, I'll, I'll pull it back and, and do it sort of, you know, maybe a 50-50 mix. And then even when I do it, not make it quite as severe. So I still think that a guy looking this way, but going over here are still saying he's in a room of more than one person at times, right? But if you want if the eyes are over here and you want him to actually be looking over there, you can't get there. So I, I get it. Right. Right. And there's like import figures that have eyes that could actually move or yeah. interchange yeah. the face with different directions. The eyes are looking. Yeah, yeah. So, so I get it. It was, like I said, it was a, an experiment that maybe didn't quite go over as, as well as I'd hoped. And, 
we probably overdid it in terms of the extremity of it. So, you know, we're, 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 we're making the correction on the fly. Gotcha. Um, we're, we're about out of time. I wanted to see if I could squeeze in one more question. If you yeah, 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 do it. I, I know you have, you literally have your work on your lap right over there. <laughs> so I know you're busy. I know you have a lot to get to, but um, one thing that I've, I've really seen kind of trickle in here and there with the DC multiverse figures um, are interchange more interchangeable hands. Like I like having interchangeable sets of hands. I think I've seen some recently announced figures where I noticed interchangeable hands. Yeah. I've also noticed um, part of that is because of the weapons thing. Uh, you know, yeah. Most most of the hands sort of came like this. So now, like, what are you doing with the hands? So we're trying to get a little animated or do some things that are a little more interesting given they're not going to be holding what they normally would have been holding. So, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. That that's awesome to see. And then I've seen changes with articulation as well, which um, like for some figures, it looks like, like for most figures, it doesn't seem to have like an ab crunch. Then some figures seem to tend to have more of an ab crunch, like the Green Lantern John Stewart figure tends to have that, but then some of them don't, or some of them will have a thigh cut, yeah. and then most of them won't. Yeah. But um, it would sometimes, just sometimes, you know, and I know it. Maybe it's a little frustrating, uh, and I, I can understand it. But again, I, I look at these toys as art, and sometimes the size of the character, their silhouette. And even their costume and the way that the costume lays uh, will dictate some of that, you know, because they'll show it to me and I'm like, that looks ugly. Like, and it's like, I, I don't care if we can put it like, it looks ugly. And other times you go, oh man, they've got a perfect place where we can do it and we can add it and be super awesome. Uh, so we don't, we don't treat all the figures exactly the same. Um, and, and those are probably the ones that people notice both good and good and bad. And the problem is when I'm able to sort of add something, then maybe people get used to it. So when I don't do it to something else, they're like, Hey, he did it on that one, but we have sort of a baseline. And then sometimes I go above and below it, depending on the actual character. Cause it can look a little odd at times. I mean, you know, like here, so I've got one on here, but I mean, there's Spawn's Mark, but as soon as I go here. Mm -hmm. right then i can twist them which is cool but like it messes them up right so our, what i've been better off to just have the the waist so that he he all he went together and the, and the mark was so we're, we're, having, we're having these sort of silly conversations sometimes we 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 get it right sometimes we we don't so yeah when you're making so many figures there's there's going to be your favorites of the litter and then there's going to be sort of the runts and and we end up doing that let me let me say that and not not in a, in a bragging way but in a proud way but just in a factual way and i can talk about it a little bit that we just got an award that the dc multiverse was the biggest selling action figure line in north america in both the u.s and in canada congratulations right? so, so again you know again to put it in perspective we don't own the master toy license even of dc right they're mm -hmm. spin master but there's also a thing called Marvel and the Star Wars and these other big brands. We were, we were number one. Now, why? Uh, why? A couple. I think a couple of reasons. I think one because again oh, we've been able to maintain good. we've been able to maintain price, right? I think it's in there. But one of the things that we're doing that was kind of shocking to Warner Brothers <laughs> was that they're going, why you got that guy on the on the list? And go, oh, because he's got a cool costume, right? I just think it looks cool. Like, uh, yeah, but he's not very popular. I'm like, don't worry about it. Like, cool in a package will sell. Uh, and they go, okay, but that means you're going to have to cut a new mold and a new steel for that. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, I understand that. So you're going to make you're going to make a new a new mold for that character, yeah, and for that one. Yeah, and for that one, yeah. And they were blown away that I would spend so much money on molds that will not be reusable, right? Because they're used to dealing with the big companies that the way they get their profit margins up too is that they try to, and Lego does this, 
right? Like in every box, you have to have so many common pieces. Don't invent a lot because that's a new mold, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and a new mold costs money. But I don't know. I, and so I think that one of the reasons why the DC multiverse is doing so well is because we're doing characters for the very first time that nobody's ever done before. So I think some of the fans and, and whether you just collect toys because they look good or because you're actually a fan of certain characters in the comic book, but uh, people weren't doing a lot of them because they, they weren't allowed by the big companies to create new molds every single time for some of these. And we were, and I've always said to them, Warner Brothers, Consumer Product and everybody, that it's like, no, 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 if I spend the money and I make it something that nobody else has sort of made before, I think that that helps potentially in getting people interested because they'll go, oh, I've, I've collected Batman, but I've, I've not had that Batman that looks like that, right? Oh, I've had, you know, I've never seen that character. They, nobody's ever made a whatever, Lobo. I'm, I'm sure they have, but I'm just making it up. But whatever the character is that we've done, we've done lots and lots now that it literally is the first time in plastic for that figure i think that matters to collectors like you and i because it's the first time you can get your hands on it in 20 years because you can't go to ebay and get the one from 10 years ago or five years ago you can you can you can get generic batman you can get ger generic batman all day long but you can't get you know red hood from 10 years ago right so we'll make red hood cool if he doesn't look like you know batman or robin that's okay I'm good. I'll, I'll, I'll spend the money on it. So. Yeah. That's one thing I've actually really appreciated. Honestly, is that, yeah, there's very, very little reuse of the figures. Even if you don't like one point of articulation or something or another, <coughs> pardon me. It's, it's a brand new sculpt. You have something fresh to look at and everything. Yeah. We try but, as much as possible. I mean, again, we, we still do it at times. So we, right. we're, we're, we're guilty of it, but not to the extreme the public companies are right, right. where it's a, it's literally an adherence to it to the point that like i said it shocks the people <clears throat> dealing with that you're willing to basically make one-offs of each one of these characters gotcha gotcha so when they factor in the numbers of sales that doesn't include like those penalty sales or anything like that like when no, the the and it's interesting the award we won was the equivalent of like Nielsen ratings and or box office uh, gross, it's it's tied to actual retail sales. It's not popularity. It's not who the fans like. It literally is what's getting rung up at the at the registers and at the tills, right? Okay. And they've got this database that they're tied into all the big sort of people and, and they just collect data. And, then, and they were like, Todd, you're, the DC multiverse was number one. So cool. Wow. Cool, cool. You know, not not internationally. I think in our category, I think the Funko Pops won uh, inter in international, but in the U.S. and Canada, we we ended up winning. Yeah. And this is, I I believe, year three now, right? Is it three? Is this year three that you've been doing DC multi? 20, Twenty-one. We're just yeah. So the, two full years, and then we're just entering our third year. Yeah. Right, right. And the thing is, the thing is to go back to like how well the DC Multiverse did, that was without movies driving it, right? They remember, they bumped, the, they bumped the Flash, they bumped the Batman, they bumped, they bumped, they bumped. We were, we were selling these toys in a void with no movies sort of pushing any of the product, uh, which basically confirms what I keep telling people, where if you just do cool stuff at a fair price, I think the audience will react to it, right? And so you don't you, you you don't you don't necessarily need a big movie to move it. I mean, obviously, Batman movie coming out that helps, but I don't know. I don't know if they sold a bunch of Eternals toys, you know, when the movie <laughs> Come came on, out. Todd. You know they didn't sell any Eternals toys. Come on, <laughs> those the Eternals. I don't. I don't like. I don't. I don't. I don't pay attention to the competition. I. But I'm just saying that I. I didn't hear. I didn't hear it. Right or whatever. I, so. So. So even. Even. Even if, you know, DC puts out Warner Brothers puts out a movie, 
it, it's okay if the movie does good, better, and different because we're just doing, you know, almost 90%, 95% of is just that library you've had for 60 years and just really wicked looking drawings, right? Just like, yeah, that one looks, that character looks good. Who cares they never made it? I, that, one, I, that one will look good on a page to the average person walking by. Awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy that you keep that in mind. I feel like you've never lost sight of the cool factor. Like that's just something I feel like you've always kind of maintained for as, for as long as I've watched your career. And Look at, I, 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 I'm going to give you the same credit. Could you strike me as this kind of person? I have to, from time to time, remind, which I shouldn't have to, but I do. I have to remind people in, in, in mostly executives from time to time with, for my 30 years, when they ask certain questions, why are you doing it, Todd? That I have to go, you wouldn't ask that question if you remembered it used to be nine years old. Come on, right? Come on. Just channel your nine-year-old inner being and just go, would that look cool? And if the answer is yes, stop overthinking all the rest. You guys are overthinking it. Cool, cool at a price I can sell. And then if you add a brand name to it, that's a home run, right? Like, what are you talking about? I've said for years, for years and years, give me Spider-Man, give me Batman, I can sell it. Well, they finally did, and we, we're selling it. Cool, right? So you've got a strong brand name, but you also just have to put some fun stuff out there, right? And stop overthinking and analyzing. I mean, here's how it works. You got, you got superhero toys sell here, mm -hmm. male, male superhero toys. And then you get, like, villains, precipitous drop, villains, female superheroes and then anything in between monsters sometimes the monsters are up here but like down here right from here to here so again i'm not saying that i can't sell a female superhero which i can what i'm saying is that i can't do an entire line of four figures in one series of nothing but females and put it in the boys action aisle can i sell it has an Amazon exclusive or a Spawn.com exclusive? Yeah, maybe, but not at the boys action figure aisle. There's a reason why it's called boys action figure aisle. And if you don't believe me, then you don't remember that either A, you were a nine-year-old boy and or that you actually have a son because it goes sort of something like this. I've said it before. Your 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 son is comes home and he gets straight A's for a year and you go you know what we're gonna we're gonna buy you a gift your 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 dad and i are going out and we're gonna we're gonna bring you a gift we're gonna go we're gonna bring you action for the evening and you go out and you look at mom and dad are in the aisle and they go hey any batman yep not getting it superman yep not gonna get it captain america hulk fighting nope 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 oh what about some transformers oh robots super super cool no uh, how about some Ben 10 sort of cool, you know, sort of creepy crawl? Yep. No, we're not going to get that either. Oh, Godzilla, King Kong. Oh, no. How about Jurassic Park? Fuck dinosaurs, right? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm going to get me this girl figure. And then you're going to come home and you're going to give it to your kid. And you're, he's going to be super anxious. He's been waiting all day. And then you're going to pull out the bag and you're going to give it to him. And he's going to go, mm. Now, again, he's a nice boy. You've raised him right. So he's not going to say anything. He shouldn't. But he's just going to ask, you know, thank you. But before I go to my room, can I just sort of ask a couple questions, mom and dad? Did they have any superhero dudes? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, did they have any robots? Oh, yeah. Lots of robots. Should have seen them. Monsters, of course. Creatures, yes. Military, yes. Okay. All, they had all of that. And what about dinosaurs, aliens? Oh, shit, you should have seen the pigs. <laughs> and you got me the female figure, right? You got me the female figure. Now, I don't know if it's true or not, but somewhere along the line, serial killers begin at a certain spot. <laughs> oh, like, my God. <laughs> at some point, 
<laughs> Once you told your kid you walked away from monsters and aliens and dinosaurs and super, like, what are you talking about? We're dudes, we're little boys. Come on, man. It's the same. We haven't evolved, right? We all like the same thing. Whatever I liked in the 60s, I am telling you, somebody's going to like it there too. So I'm not saying we can't sell exclusive. I'm just saying, I, and, I, and, I, and I tell that story, when you're selling at the masses, when sometimes I'm dealing with people and they want me to do two thirds of my line is the villains and or the females or the kid characters. I go, dudes, can't do it. Can't do it, right? Any more than I can sell Derek Jeter when he was on the Yankees all day long. I can't sell the best guy on the Florida Marlins. I don't care how good he is. Somebody would rather have the fifth best Yankee because there's just something about that sale. I've been at it for 30 years. You're going to have to trust me. I'm not saying the brand isn't strong. I'm not saying you're not going to put out a movie that's not going to make a billion dollars. I'm saying category specific in the boys action aisle. I can't sell seven consecutive female figures any more than you can sell Bruce Wayne and Commissioner Gordon and somebody else in the girl's doll aisle when there's a Batman movie. There's no Commissioner Gordon over there. So why are you forcing stuff that won't sell over here at the same level as over there? So will I do villains? Of course I will, but I got to be a little picky. Will I do female figures? Of course I will. I got to be a little picky. Will I do monsters? Yeah, okay. I got to be a little picky. Mm -hmm. But can I sell Superman and Batman and Spawn all day long? Of course I can. Every single day of my life, right? Just let me pick who I think I can sell. And if I don't give you big checks for royalties, then you guys can have a deeper conversation but I, 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 think, I think I know what they want, right? I think I know what they want. And, and, and so far, the proof is in the pudding and it's working. So God bless you guys, the consumer. So, and you, and you for, I mean, you know what it's like to be a 10-year-old boy. God bless you. <clears throat> yeah, no, that, that, that kid still lives inside. He's, he hasn't gone anywhere. I, I, I don't know if it's issues or if it's just me. Uh, <laughs> Right. I'm not saying it's healthy for either one of yeah. us. We're not full grown adults. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it actually works in our I pay my bills and stuff yeah, like and, that. Right. And our collecting kids. and our entertaining and our making product and it yeah. sort of helps. So we'll do all of it, but we just I have to wait. I have the, just a waiting of all of it, right? So Right, right. No. Well, I, I really appreciate you again making the time and, and I'm grateful to have the conversation. It's always a pleasure, Todd. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to announce or, or promote before we before we head out, but um, um, no, no. The only thing I'm saying on the on the toy front is um, we're building a platform that's going live uh, for uh, NFTs, and if you if you've seen um, some people are selling like statues and figures on the NFT level. And I know that it, it, it doesn't make sense for a lot of people. They don't quite get it, whatever else. But there's two things that do make sense uh, is that one, we don't have distribution all over the globe, right? This is just a fact. Not only us, but big Fortune 500 companies. So there are people then that either have to buy it then on the secondary market. And if you live in the wrong place in the globe, the shipping costs are almost prohibitive, right? You can buy a $40 item and it's like, $80 to ship it, right? So you just go, screw it. I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And if your option then is to say, I'm not, I can't get it, uh, then, but, or I can get it in a digital form, then I'll get it in a digital form. Okay. That's one group of people in the world. I think that we all think that everybody lives in America. They don't. Then there's another group that's like, no, you live in a, in a, in a, in a place where you have access to everything, but it's called Japan and it's, and it's, you live in Tokyo and your apartment literally is 600 square feet. Because, okay, you can't have a big collection. It is impossible. You don't have the space, mm -hmm. right? If you got two big statues, that's it. You either choose between the two statues or your wife at that point, right? Those are because you don't have room for both. 
<laughs> so so now you go, oh man. So your only other choice then, even for that guy living in the middle of, of, of Tokyo, is to say, mm, well, maybe I can have a collection, but it was going to have to be digital, right? So again, I'm not saying it's for everybody, but there are just there's a need for certain people that that having something that they couldn't physically get digitally is the only way they're going to be able to collect it. That's it. Right. Yeah. And, and then, and then there's other markets. So, so we're going to be sort of experimenting with that to just see if we can, you know, sell it to people who I guess like to flip NFTs, but more importantly, those people who live in those weird pockets around the world, that that's the only way they're going to be able to basically get some of this stuff. Uh, is to just buy stuff digitally, just my, my comics, right? Uh, I've always seen, yeah, digital, I mean, NFTs I've seen is like basically like digital collectibles, right? Like I have yeah. I have my YouTube channel, I think I have over 2,000 videos. I know I have the mini SD card with the very first video, right? Yeah. Like like that could be an NFT, right? Sure. Like the very yeah. first copy, or the very first video or something yeah. could yeah. be worth 30 cents. Talks, yeah. something like that. No, no. Today, today we, after months and months and months and months and months, it seems like of, of building the platform, we we did a an airdrop which we gave away six thousand six hundred sixty six, essentially free. You have to mint it, but it's like it's like five cents to mint it. Um, uh, of, of we gave away six thousand items to just say thanks for your patience, right? I mean, because we're still about an, another month away. Uh, but we were able to build this tunnel to just say, hey, for all you people have been waiting, here's here's a freebie, right? And and I mean it happened today. And I and somebody just phoned me and said some of the stuff is already trading at 200 bucks. So essentially we gave somebody, if you swapped it today, some we basically gave somebody 200 free dollars today, right? Because we didn't charge them a penny, right? It, I think it cost five cents to mint. Um, so and then they swapped it for 200 bucks. Woo! uh so cool it's okay sometimes sometimes the consumer should win in in some of it sometimes you should tip your hat to your consumer and and say thank you um that you don't have to always squeeze the consumer uh and i think if you treat your fans fairly then that's how you build loyalty a little bit uh and i think sometimes big companies forget that right just it's okay. It's okay if you don't get every last nickel out of them. It's okay, right? Well, it's it, it's such standard practice to the shareholders. The shareholders kind of thing is always. It's it's almost like it's not even <clears throat> like with what you're talking about with the freight shipping. Like that is not an option when you have the shareholders involved. It's like it's. I don't think it's ever. I wouldn't be surprised. I don't, I don't really know, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not even ever discussed. It's just how well, much. Like I said, going back, they're under a legal fiduciary responsibility, which uh -huh. basically means you must maximize value to shareholders. All that. They're under a legal fiduciary. That's their job. And if they don't do it, they're not doing their job legally right. So they're not built. They cannot think a lot of times beyond the 90 days it's all everything is 90 days 90 days 90 days to the next earnings meeting right yeah. um so i it's, it's frustrating for me when i'm in these meetings and i'm having conversations about hey here's what we can do in three years from now right and to you and it's like it's like that's an eternity to them right because like dude we got 90 days we've got to do a report so um it's frustrating because you can't just let things naturally grow right which is how things work out in the real world uh, but because of that because i know that that's how the mechanism works as a small private company myself i'm able to do a little bit more natural stuff which is why i've been able to live between the giants right uh yeah. because i can i can offer a couple of things that sometimes they can't right uh cool right so I think it's awesome. I, I think this is great. It's uh, from my perspective, it's it's very punk rock. I, even though we're talking business and everything, it's kind of like, it's it's keeping things like um, a little bit more pure. It feels like a little a little bit more more. Well, the thing that's ridiculous is that with that sort of small minded thinking, not worrying about chasing all that, 
we saw more figures than all the big boys did. Like, this is the thing, like guys, like now there's actually data that says that if you sort of look at other ways to conduct it, like you'll get your money. Like, I don't know, it's, it's weird to me. If you want to sell, I just showed you the path. Uh, but you know what? Uh, you guys will ignore it. Uh, but that's good because it'd be good for me. So. <laughs> All right, excellent. And it's it's cool to not have to spend as much money. I mean, saving some some bucks in the pocket, picking up the figures is 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 very very cool. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, I, I really appreciate everything that you're doing, Todd. And I'm, I'm looking forward to, to to the new figures coming out in the future and everything. And I'm very happy to hear um, how malleable things are it, it, you seem to like really keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening well i can't change it's but, all been easy during the pandemic here but you know you just you you just i'm in the same boat as everybody else in the world right so we're not any special so we just have to navigate the complications like everybody else right and 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 complaining about it is of no does 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 us no service so you just do the best you can and hope that in the long run, it, you know, you, you make more right decisions than wrong and, and you keep going. So, and like I said, I'm at, I'm at your 30. So, you know, we're okay for now. Yeah. I have a feeling you know what you're talking about a little mm -hmm. bit. <laughs> enough. enough. I've done, I, 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 make, I, make, I make enough, enough right decisions over the wrong way. So that's okay. So I'm not, I, my goal is not to please the entire planet. <laughs> it's just to make, <laughs> It's to make cool toys and let everybody else make their own decisions, whether they want it. So. Awesome. Sounds great. Now, thank you again, Todd. It's always a pleasure. And uh, yeah, lo looking forward to seeing more from McFarland Toys and, and what's uh, to come in the future. And mm -hmm. thanks again for, for being here. And uh, hope to see you in person sooner than later, depending yeah. on how things work right. out. You know what I mean? It, you know, I miss... Uh, our our face to face encounters at Toy Fair and Comic Con. So hopefully things yeah. get back to normal sooner than later. Yeah, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks again, Todd. All right. Peace out. All right. Take care. Yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Hey, new Sharpness Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.